Indiana Living on Fox 14 continues. And welcome back. I'm joined now by Carrie Hefner for In the Garden, and we're talking about cold crops today. Carrie, thank you for joining us. Good to be here. What did you bring us today? Okay, so uh, let's see if, if I can remember here. We have Brussels sprouts and cabbage. These are two examples of the so-called cold crops. Mm -hmm. um, basically, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, uh, cabbage, uh, cauliflower, all the leafy things we grow during our cool growing season uh, called cold crops and um, all have the basically the same growing requirements so very easy to put in the cool season vegetable garden. Now s celery is here on the end and I'll talk about that in just a bit if we have time. Celery is not a cold crop but it's something we should still have in the garden anyway because it's super easy to grow and of course one-third of the Holy Trinity but um, your cold crops uh, compared to our spring and summer vegetables don't have the massive root systems that go deep into the soil so a fairly shallow soil will work for a lot of these things. Um, come in with a pre-plant fertilizer maybe something like an 824-24 and because these are mostly leafy vegetables you can side dress with something like calcium nitrate um, a couple weeks after you get them in the ground and then about every three weeks afterwards. Now Cool season crops doesn't necessarily mean cold season crops. When we, if we have a cold winter this year, and there are those of us who hope, who hope we do, um, you'll see glo uh, growth slow down, and some of these might actually last over into next spring. And as temperatures begin to warm up, they'll resume growth, and, and you'll get an early spring harvest too. So I did not know that Brussels sprouts were so easy to grow. Have you tried? To Very grow easy to grow, Brussels and I'm going to tell you, I have. Uh, and and when you just go out and pick them right off the plant you can pop them like popcorn and it's a very sweet vegetable to grow in the in the vegetable garden and good raw and so good for you absolutely too. yep well every Tuesday Carrie answers your home garden questions for live in the garden and our first question today is what is the prime time for <laughs> ragweed uh, there's no good time for <laughs> ragweed to be honest with you but it is starting to shed pollen now mm -hmm. we have basically two species of ragweed in our area we see a lot of it on the sides of the roads the giant ragweed which is ambrosia trifida and then the more common ragweed ambrosia artemisia folia and its relatives are the smaller one but the pollen of course is what's terrible and a lot of people think they might actually be allergic to goldenrod which is flat profusely right now. Goldenrod pollen will have a tendency to stay uh, stuck to the flower. It's a little stickier than ragweed pollen. Mm -hmm. Also with goldenrod we get polyploids, that is uh, species build up chromosome numbers. Polyploid pollen is a lot larger and more difficult to disperse in the wind. So um, our honeybees are still having a lot to forage on right now. But right now, ragweed is starting to go too. And so, so that's why a lot of people have the sniffles. That's why a lot throat. of people are miserable. Plus, some of the grasses are flowering mm -hmm. too. And grass pollen can also make you pretty miserable. Okay, well, our next question is, the best time to feed the lawn is when? Okay, well, we're, if we're fertilizing lawns, basically any time during the growing season, starting in about March, as our deep south turf grasses come out of dormancy and we move into the growing season, and you can divide this feeding up into about three applications, unless you just like to mow, uh, starting in March as it comes out of dormancy, then mid-season in June, and then again in August or September. Our southern turf grasses are now metabolically gearing up to go dormant, so we don't want to put a lot of nitrogen on them right now. If you're going to so-called winterize your lawn, come in with a fertilizer that's higher in potash or potassium. That's the third number on the fertilizer bag. Uh, make sure that number is higher than the nitrogen number, which is the first number. So. Keep that in mind. Good information. That will keep it from turning brown during the Well, winter. it's going to turn brown. That'll keep it from put, trying to put out new leafy growth, which it does not want to do right now. It's going to try to go dormant and turn brown, which is its natural tendency. So anytime we bomb it with nitrogen right now, we're going to keep it from doing that, and that's going to stress it. All right. Thank you so much, okay. Carrie. And if you would like to have your home garden questions answered, just submit them on our website, myarchimist.com. And still ahead, we're talking Bully Prevention Month with the Children's Coalition. You're watching Louisiana Living on Fox 14. Trade names are used by the LSU Ag Center for clarity and information purposes only. Neither commercial endorsement of specific products nor a recommendation to the exclusion of similar products is implied.